I'll let you guys in on a little secret. Knowing all the answers to the technical questions does not mean you will pass the interview. Did you get it? No, I got rejected again. Most people don't realize this, so they make the same mistakes over and over again, wondering why they never got the job, despite being fully qualified for the role. And by the way, I've been on both ends of the spectrum, as the interviewer and the interviewee. So I wanted to reveal the biggest mistakes that you should avoid and how to actually approach your interview so that you're the most memorable candidate. So recently I made a reel about toggling light bulbs on and off. Let's take a look. Imagine you have a row of light bulbs. On the first round, you toggle every bulb. So now all the bulbs are on. On the second round, you toggle every second bulb. So bulbs two, four, and six are now off. On the third pass, you toggle every third bulb. So the bulbs three, six, and nine change their state again. The question is how many bulbs are still on after the last pass? So you guys, that's actually a brain teaser on leak code. And the answer in code is actually quite simple too. It's just the square root of n. Yeah, that's it. But here's the thing. If you did get this problem in an interview and you'd seen it before, giving the interviewer the correct answer doesn't really mean anything unless you show them how you went through that step-by-step -step process to get your result. The explanation is a little bit more complicated. When does a light bulb stay on? A bulb is toggled every round where its position number is a multiple of the round number. Okay, okay, we can just stop there. If you want to see the entire explanation, just feel free to go check it out on my Instagram. It's linked in the description below. If you think about it from the perspective of the interviewer, they're looking to see you struggle through a difficult problem, talk through how you would solve it, and then come up with some sort of answer. They're testing to see how you would deal with ambiguity and pressure. The biggest mistake people make is overstudying to the point where they're memorizing difficult problems. When it comes time for the interview, they don't leave room for approaching problems that they've never actually seen before and showing the interviewer how they can walk through the problem under pressure. It's a pretty easy tell if you've seen the problem before too. If you've seen every problem already, how is the interviewer supposed to know that you can solve new problems? Well, they can't. I don't care if you're a junior engineer, a mid-level engineer, or even a senior engineer. Everyone has to know some level of system design. It's the bread and butter of being a software engineer. And with everything being so easy to set up on the cloud nowadays, it's kind of the job of a software engineer to be a full stack developer, an infra and DevOps engineer, and also a QA tester. If you're interested in finding resources for this, I'd actually highly recommend checking out YouTube. It's a free platform after all, and it's really easy to find great resources. Just the other day, I watched Neat Code YouTube system design interview. The way he explains everything is really important too. Now, since we're dealing with such a massive scale, 50 million uploads per day, we probably can't handle that with a single server. So we would most likely have a load balancer sitting in between a bunch of application servers so that we can kind of scale this horizontally. Now, this is a pretty generic thing. For now, let's just assume that how we kind of do this doesn't really matter whether, you know, the user hits this application server or this one. So for now, I'm going to simplify our design and just kind of draw it like the user is making an upload request to the application server, even though under the hood, we know it's of course going to need to be load balanced. With system design, you guys have to remember that the solution can be very vague. It really depends on a number of factors. For example, how many users will be actively using the product, the ratio of reads versus writes in the system, the trade-offs between consistency versus availability, the cap theorem. You really want to understand when to use SQL or NoSQL databases, how authentication works, how to scale clusters horizontally versus vertically, how to containerize your application and how to successfully use microservices, firewalls, caches, proxies, and more. The biggest mistake people make is regurgitating the design of something they watched online 20 minutes before the interview. Don't let yourself become that person. LeCode is great. Don't get me wrong. It has hundreds of problems to test your knowledge, hear explanations, and even time tests to practice on. But you also wanna make sure that you're not churning through hundreds of problems and wasting your time for no reason. The best way to prep is to actually learn everything that an interview has to offer. This includes understanding the most important data structures and algorithms like you can find on leak code, but then you also have to understand how to use deduction and problem solving skills to collaborate through the interview with your interviewer. Remember, the interviewer doesn't care if you've seen the problem before. They care if you haven't seen a problem, but you're still able to work through it with them. This also goes for the behavioral round and the system design round as well. So don't forget that. All that being said, I actually found a platform that can help you with all of the things that I just listed. 
listed. And it's today's sponsor, Formation.dev. Formation is the world's only AI-powered dynamic interview prep platform. They focus on personalized skill development and have world-class mentorship for experienced engineers to land their dream job. If you compare it to a platform like LeetCode, a lot of time is spent practicing things you don't really need to know. It's overkill, which means you don't spend enough time practicing concepts you actually need to brush up on. Formation helps you identify your most urgent focus areas and helps you most efficiently close the gaps. They help you master 14 types of interviews, including DSA, live coding, behavioral prep, system design, and more. You can prepare for interviews solo, in one-on-one -on -one mock interviews, or in tiny groups with top engineering mentors. They even have an adaptive learning platform to make sure you're most effectively prepping for interviews based on your goals and help you understand exactly where the interview bar is and how you can reliably get there. You'll also be introduced to their network of really successful engineers, people that have gone through the entire interview process and landed coveted roles at Google, Microsoft, Shopify, as well as career coaches on the hiring committees at many of these coveted companies. The cool thing is, so far in 2024, Formation has helped people increase their salary by $127,000 on average. If you want to stop failing tech loops, especially going into the competitive job market in the new year, apply to Formation to get your personalized prep plan with targeted mock interviews, mentorship, and skill benchmarking. To give you a leg up on getting started, mention Pooja on your application and the first 25 people to join will get $300 off. My early holiday gift to you. I've included a link in the description below, so go check it out. The next thing to remember is that your interviewer is not a professional interviewer. Most likely there's someone that's already on the team or the hiring manager, which means they're human just like you. They're looking for someone to become their future coworker or possibly even friend. You've got to do well in the technical round, but I'd be lying if I didn't say that everyone had some sort of bias based on how well they get along with you in the interview. Be a team player for that reason. Ask questions. Don't just jump into the problem. I like to follow the 15, 10, 10, 5 rule. The first 15 minutes is to clarify the problem and talk through potential solutions. The second 10 minutes is to start writing general pseudocode once you get the go ahead to move forward. The next 10 minutes are to actually code the thing. And the last five minutes are to ask them questions about themselves. Don't forget this last part. Even if your interview went poorly, most people remember the last impression that they had of you. So you can salvage some of it by asking asking them really good questions about themselves. This is your chance to pretend that you're solving a problem with another coworker, just like any other day. Just take a deep breath, relax. You'll do great if you just get in the mindset of collaboration versus you being tested on something. At the end of the day, technical interviews aren't about how much you've memorized or how much you can regurgitate, or how well you can regurgitate the code that you've practiced. They're about showing your ability to think critically, collaborate, and adapt under pressure, skills that matter in the real world of engineering. So instead of focusing on just trying to solve every leak code problem, shift your mindset. Prioritize the process, emphasize communication, and approach the interview like a problem-solving session with a future teammate. Remember, the goal is to not just demonstrate that you're capable of coding, but also capable of working with others to tackle challenges.